someone's upset. Anyways, hi friends, welcome back to the channel. Um, if you saw my most recent upload, you may have noticed I've been a little under the weather lately. I am feeling a lot better now. My, I'm, I'm not 100%, I'm still fighting a nasty sinus infection. The fever is gone, I am feeling notably better, but not 100%, so. Not quite there, but I'm getting there. Anyways, today we are going to be discussing the Fullmetal Alchemist light novels, as promised on TikTok months ago. We're going to be discussing all six of them in 30 minutes or less, so let's jump right on into that. The first light novel would be The Land of Sand. This is what the first edition looks like. This is what the second edition looks like. Alright, so, in The Land of Sand, following a lead on the Philosopher's Stone, and now find themselves in a town called Zenitime. Here, they learn of two imposters who have been using their identities to get into an alchemic laboratory. Now, this may sound a little familiar if you have seen the original Fumetto Alchemist anime, the one from 2003, not Brotherhood, because this book is actually the source material for episodes 11 and 12, where we meet Russell and Fletcher Tringham, the brothers who were impersonating Ed Now to work in Mugiar's lab. This book is the source material for those episodes, and also where Russell and Fletcher actually come from. If you like Russell and Fletcher, this is the books where you meet them. Anyways, despite the fact that this book's the source material for a couple of episodes, uh, what happens in the anime versus what happens in the book are wildly different. Like, it's some of the same ideas, but overall, like, the motives, the... Lots of the causes, what's going on, they're different. Um, if you remember the anime, and Russell and Fletcher's work that's making everybody sick, it's the red water that they're using that's making the town sick. However, in the books, it's actually the environment that's making people sick. It's a dusty wasteland, and it's the dust that's making the people sick, not Russell and Fletcher's work. What's wrong with Russell and Fletcher's work, however, in these books, is actually the fact that Russell was getting way Russell was getting way too absorbed into it and Fletcher is basically watching his older brother kill himself over his research trying to live up to his father and make his father proud and Fletcher doesn't know what to do Fletcher feels helpless and then uh, excuse my sniffles and then Ed and Al are able to help Russell basically it's mostly Russell who has to overcome this they give Fletcher the strength to actually stand up to Russell and be like, you have to stop this. Like, it's Fletcher who has to do it. But and now do help Fletcher be able to do this. It's a really cute book. It's really sweet. And also, in the end, there is the Warehouse 13 story, which is another thing that we get to see in the um, 2003 anime. Again, excuse my stuffiness. I can't breathe. The um, Warehouse 13 is also in this book. It's the goofiness with like Roy's men where they think there's like this haunted warehouse. It's a really funny cute side story. It's only like a chapter long. And basically, you know, they, they think there's some ghosts going on and they do some investigating and really it's just an illusion and dog bones. Really cute funny story. Uh, I suggest it. Um, I adore Fletcher. Fletcher is baby, and this is the book he's from. The next book is The Abducted Alchemist. This is what the first edition looks like. This is what the second edition looks like. In The Abducted Alchemist, as the title implies, a certain alchemist gets abducted. So, the main plot is... There are some terror attacks that have been springing up throughout Amestris, and oh my gosh, these sniffles. Anyways, and the people are frustrated with the lack of action from the military. Now, they're doing the best they can, but it explains in the book why their response just sucks. But along with these terror attacks, there's also been a string of kidnappings and the children of high-ranking military officers have been getting abducted and held ransom. Now, Ed decides he wants to be a little shit to Roy, and 
this causes a huge misunderstanding where the terrorists actually think Ed is Roy's son and they kidnap him. And Roy gets a note stating, we have your son. And um, Eastern Headquarters is like, oh, who's your son? You have a son? What? What's up? And that, that hilarious scene. And of course, we all know Roy does not actually have kids. But they get a call from Al. And he's like, hey, yeah, my brother got kidnapped. I need some help. And um, Ed's able to save himself. But he does need backup catching the criminals. So as Roy and the gang show up, it's like, okay, we catch the criminals. We got this. Bada boom, all done. It's a really funny story. And it's a short read, actually. Of the novel, it's actually one of the shorter ones. I do suggest it. It's a good, funny read. Yeah, it's actually pretty cute. Oh, yeah, and it's also adorable. Like, it has a little bit of moments. I really like this book. The third one is The Valley of the White Petals. This is what the first edition looks like, and this would be the second edition. Now, this book, I would say it's a little heavier than the other two. Like, The Land of Sand, it's a little, mmm. And um, the second book's literally about terrorists, but this one, I would say it's a little, it's a, it's a heavier one. All right, so, Ed and Al are sent to investigate a town called Wisteria. And in Wisteria, this town seems perfect. Everybody's trying to get in, and nobody's ever leaving. The town is perfect on paper. The leader of this town, he's friendly, he's charismatic, he helps the people, and he's what people look for in a leader. But the thing that intrigues the boys the most is the fact that this town is governed by the principle of equivalent exchange. You get what you give. And that sounds perfect on paper. This town seems like a perfect utopia on paper. However, in practice, that's not really the case. For someone who is big and strong and able-bodied, like Alphonse is, he's able to pull through that labor easily. And Al is entranced by this town. It's, it's this perfect utopia. So he's working, he's working and he's helping the town like build and he's having a good time. He's really enjoying it. But Ed ends up on the other side of town where the people who can't work end up, where the sick end up, where the elderly, the disabled, where the undesirable people in this town end up. And Ed sees that the town is not as perfect as it seems. And he realizes something absolutely terrible is happening. It's not so much that the um, people never leave. It's that the um, people who do leave are never seen or heard from again. And um, Ed's able to help Alice snap out of this and come to his senses after they realize, after Ed realizes what's actually going on. And, um, you have to read the book to figure out, like, what's actually happening, because it's dark. And they're able to save a little boy who almost gets sold because he just wasn't as useful as everyone else. It's a, it, 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 The Valley of the White Petals is, whew, but it's a good book. I really like The Valley of the White Petals. <clears throat> All right. Under the Faraway Sky and also Roy's Vacation. This is a two-in-one. This is what the first edition looks like. And this would be the second edition. Now, this book actually takes place before the manga even starts. It is shortly after the boys leave for their adventure to search for the Philosopher's Stone. It's within a year of them leaving. And they end up sidetracked because Ed gets sick. And they end up in a small village where they meet a familiar face. It is a boy that they grew up with who only exists in this book. His name's Pitt. He's exclusive to this book. But he's a boy that the um, Ed now grew up with. And after meeting Pitt and seeing that like Pitt's working hard in a profession, he's in a trade and he's studying and he's aiming for his future. 
Ed starts to feel a little doubt over himself because he's chasing after a fairy tale. He feels lost and he's confused and he's not really sure what's what's going on or what's happening. And you realize that Pitt's feeling the same way. He, the, the boys have so much mutual respect for each other that it makes them feel bad about themselves. And eventually the boys are able to learn that they're still young. They have time to figure things out. And it's not it's not all said and done. They still have time. Now I mentioned this book being a two in one. Yeah. I mentioned this being a two in one. The second story is Roy's Vacation. Roy's Vacation is about Roy, Maze Hughes, and Alex Armstrong. And Roy is sent to a different base for a little bit to help with some training. And he's going off to do something where he is intercepted by Mace Hughes and Alex Armstrong. They take him on this hiking trip, which ends up in a small village. However, this village is completely ran by children. There's no adults in this town at all. And Armstrong and Hughes are immediately taken in. The kids love them. But they're not so sure about Mustang. And they have a little he has a little bit of issues. And basically Roy he he has to learn to loosen up a little bit. He has to learn to be able to work with these children and be able to handle these children. And another very important thing is Roy gets down to the bottom of why one particular kid is especially moody. He's just a grumpy 15-year-old who just went to eh. And he learns why this kid is just so angry at the world. And he also learns why there's no adults in this town. You're going to have to read the book, however, to figure out why all of this is. It's a really good book. Um, I really like Roy's Vacation. I think it's such a cute story. It's, it's funny. It is also a funny story. And I suggest it, yeah. All right, the fourth, the fifth book, The Ties That Bind. I actually really love this one. It's so cute. This is the first edition. This is the second edition. Now, in The Ties That Bind, Ed and Al learn about a banned book. And in this story, they seek, they seek, yeah, they seek a lot of things. In this book, they actually go on a small little journey to find this banned book because it contains information about human transportation transmutation that they didn't know prior and while they are searching for this book they meet a young Ishvalan boy who is being raised by an Amestrian family after the boy lost his family in the genocide campaign now the boy loves his Amestrian family of course there are a little bit of weirdness he feels a little weird uh about being different and this is where Al is really able to shine and being different himself. And he helps this little boy by like, hey, you see me wandering with my brother all the time. Let me show you something. And then he shows, I can't remember the kid's name. I think it's Kip. They show, he shows Kip that um, there's nothing in there. The armor is completely empty. And he was like, if an empty suit of armor and a full flesh and blood boy can be brothers, then why can't an Ishvalan have an Amestrian mom? And that definitely helps Kip feel like, yeah, and I do love them. They are my parents. And I am happy. And it's so cute. And it's like, it's adorable. And beyond all of this, there's a lot more screwed up things going. Because, you know, of course, it's Full Metal Alchemist. It wouldn't be Full Metal Alchemist if something screwed up wasn't happening in the background. Um, so there are these Chimera attacks. And Roy's investigating these chimera attacks. There is an actual link between the, this adorable little boy and these chimera attacks. It's the, um, the boy's father, not his biological one, but the man who's been raising him. He is also behind the Forbidden Book. Well, he works with someone who is behind the Forbidden Book. And I don't want to give away too much, but basically the boy who's been raising Kip 
the man who's been raising Kip is also studying human transmutation for reasons. And um, he ends up working with the person who wrote the book that Ed and I are searching for. And with that, to gather resources, they're using these chimeras to um, harvest people. And um, Roy's investigating these chimeras, Ed and I are meeting this boy. And then their paths go whoop, as always, because, you know, it just has to. And, um, yeah, I, I, I don't want to give away too much, because I, it, it, mm, this book's hard to talk about without giving away too much. But, um, yeah, no, I, it, just read this book, just read this book, it's really good, it is really good. Uh, yeah, I think the boy's name's Kip, I don't remember. But it, it's such a cute story, and of course, in, in true nature, it, it, it's a little fucked up at points. Ah, speaking of fucked up, the last one. In this book, Winnery is studying the Rush Rally, and while she's studying, she learns him more about Automail than what she thought. While she is working, there is this young boy who loses a limb, and his current prosthetics is calling, causing him a lot of issues, and his family's trying to get him to get some new Automail. However, the boy is reluctant, he's hesitant, he doesn't want to. The automail he currently has is causing him so many problems and he doesn't want more and that's fair and Winry's trying her hardest to gain this boy's trust but she overworks herself and she starts becoming reckless and she starts becoming sloppy and in this messiness she ends up messing up a piece of machinery sorry i'm messing with my nail she ends up messing up a piece of machinery and while she's searching for parts to replace it she learns about a dark underside of the automail industry where there are people who are purposely making botched automail that hurt the users so that the users have to keep buying more and um she ends up discovering this whole ring that's going on and turns out that this boy she's been trying to gain the trust of was a victim of some of these less than honest engineers so her collaborating with the police force are able to actually help bring some of these crooks to justice and um it, it, it's it's it, it's a good story it's a good book uh of the six it was actually what less than favorite but it's actually really interesting and um actually a really good book now this one is also another two in one the second story in here is Alphonse's Troubles, and it's a really short story. Basically, basically, what happens in this story is that you're just giving praise to people, and I was like, oh, yep, this is a good person right here. And they were going to do a little thing about Ed, about, oh, yeah, Ed's doing some good things, hell yeah. And Ed just completely fucks it up. And I was like, yep, of course, of course, of course. And that's basically the gist of it. That is basically the gist. I, I feel like this picture right here is the best way I can sum up what happens. Of course. And that would be a brief summary of all six of the Fumetto Alchemist light novels. Uh, I would definitely say they are worth the buy. The first edition that you see right here, they are $9.99 each. We bought a second edition that are right here are $10.99 each. However, these ones are a little bit more difficult to come by as they are a bit older. You know, these ones are pretty readily available anywhere you can get books. Now, if light novels aren't really your cup of tea, I still say they are worth the investment because they look excellent with the collection. Like, hold on. Let me just scoot out of the way real quick. Yeah, there we go. Even if you don't have any interest in actually reading the novels, they make an excellent addition to the collection. <clears throat> anyways that will be it for this video uh 
as I mentioned in the intro, that I recently did an unboxing of Roy and Reese's pop-up parade figures. You can find that linked in the description. I was terribly sick in that video, so it's a little low energy, but it's there. It exists. And once I finally get King Bradley's pop-up parade figure in hand, I'll be doing an unboxing of that as well. Uh, stay tuned, because I will be doing a collection tour soon. And, yeah. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can be here for all of that. And I'll catch you later. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, can I try and get out? Oh, oh, oh sorry. Can you go for me? Wait, Helen. Good. Part of it now. I'm trying to get these out. <laughs> where I hide my cosplay. <laughs> yes. Okay, you have freedom. Uh, we're gonna have an ambulance coming through. Mom's uh, chest is hurting her and she's getting sick and dehydrated. Okay. Thanks for the heads up. <laughs> I think I'm about to redo this entire bit. Um... I think I'm gonna hold off until like that all happens. <laughs>